I'm here to tell you, it's not just uncontrollable, it's uncontrolled. And uh, it goes from food to drinking to drugs to whatever. The Bible's real plain on those things. I hate to break it to people. There's no gray area in God. There's just people trying to dance on the line to see how close they can get. It ends up always costing the presence of God. And then they trade for some counterfeit thing instead of really getting all the goodness that God has. If he said be drunk with new wine, he, that means the presence of the living God. I mean, you don't, have, you don't need some alcohol to sustain you. You just need to be in the presence of God to fulfill you. And if you're trading one for the other, you're making a choice, just like we talked about this morning. Come on, I'm preaching straight. And I want to tell you, listen, but if you're getting beat up, it's because you chose to go back under the law like we read, right? Just choose to be in the presence of God. He don't want to beat on you. He wants to love you. He wants you to come on over to the other side, get in the presence and cut a jig with Him. He wants you to do the happy dance. He wants you to be so full of goodness of God it's just oozing out of you. And they'll say, why are you so happy? <laughs> well, let me tell you. Let me tell you who my Jesus is. You'll say, well, that's, I had that when I was a new believer, but then I had to grow up and face some things. Well, you might have grown up, but you didn't have to, you didn't have to sour up. It's not fermentation with Christians. It's not the older you get, the more sour you get. But listen, I've been there where the things of this world choke the life out of you, where things come. Remember how we started? I'm going to ease up on you in a minute because remember we started these things easily beset? Do you remember how we started? So don't take the hammer, but take the light. And if you see them in your life this morning, get them under the blood and realize, hey, you know, I've got authority here. Who hindered me? I hindered me. I want to repent. I want to shut the door. I want more of the presence of God. Come on. Ugly parodies of community. That means having a false community. If you look around this world today, Unfortunately, I'm going to just be real honest. You can go to most churches and they have a better most most bars and they got a better community than some churches are going on in them, and they show people how they care. It's not it's not real because as soon as you turn on one of them, they're going <laughs> they're going to stab you in the back. But it sure appears to be that way, and lots of people in the world can seem to be that way. Church, we just need to do better. If we're in the presence of God, it'll make us love people like Jesus loved. But you know what? If you would rather be, have somebody that you can't trust that wants to trade you favor for favor than to, than to risk it all loving people the way Jesus loved, you need to be in the presence of God. Well, that's good preaching. Yeah. I could go on. This isn't the first time I have warned you. You know, If you use your freedom this way, you will not inherit God's kingdom. Can we not get any plainer than that? Listen, I've done already, nobody get any more ideas, by the way. I've done more funerals for a small church than I care to do in the next 10 years. And then if any of you ever dare think you're moving on, you better be right. So help me here. I will raise you from the dead and we'll have a come to Jesus. <laughs> and if you think I'm playing, you just try me. Ah, just try me. So y'all better, but let, let, listen, God's got great things for us. He loves you. He's for you. He's not against you. Let's just let all this other junk go and let's get in the presence of the living God. Amen. And if you've got his time for your time to go, you better be ready with bells on. Amen. Or you're coming back. Amen. I don't know if they believe me. But... <laughs> I believe you. <laughs> Let's look at the next one. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. That means you can have as much of it as you want. You can do it as much as you want. You'll never get in trouble for it. It will just make you happy and everybody around you happy. You don't have to worry about how much you can do or how much you can't do. You can just do it as much as you can stand it. And then do it some more. 
Oh, come on. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. You know, most people, they can say, well, I can deal with some love. I really like joy. I like experiencing as peace. But you don't talk about that long-suffering stuff, preacher. <laughs> don't talk about gentleness. Goodness we can do, faith, yeah. Meekness, maybe. Temperance, what do you mean temperance? And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. That means you crucified it. You said, hey, this is not lining up with the Word of God. <laughs> I'm taking you out and I'm taking authority over you and I'm going to nail you back to the cross where you belong. It was finished there and you're not going no more with me because <laughs> I'm not going into the pleasures of this world. I'm going on to the presence of the living God and I can't enter in over here when you're still trying to hang on so we're going to have a come to Jesus meeting. I see you trying to get there and I'm going to put you on the cross today and you're going to stay there in Jesus. Jesus' name, and I'm going to go have me a good time over here. <laughs> Woo! Is anybody about ready to go? Is anybody about ready to leave some stuff on the other side today? If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. That means don't just... Enjoy the presence of God. That means walk it out and show everybody else the presence of the living God. You know, it's one thing to experience it on Sunday. It's another thing to live it on Monday. Amen. Let us not be desirous of vainglory to provoking one another, envying one another. But what happens when we live God's way? He brings gifts into our lives. Much the same way that fruit appears in an orchard. Things like affection for others, exuberance about life, serenity. We develop a willingness to stick with things. A sense of compassion in the heart. And a conviction that a basic holiness preeminates things and people. We find ourselves involved in loyal commitments. Has anybody that's really just started serving Jesus found that these traits started coming into your life. Amen. Has anybody found that these traits are the ones the enemy hates the most? Amen. Not needing to force our way in life, able to marshal and direct our energies wisely. Legalism is helpless in bringing this about. It only gets in the way. See, I can get up here and the enemy, that's why he likes to try to tell you that preachers are legalists. Because I can get up here and tell you the way to go every Sunday. I can't make you do it. I can correct you every time. I can point the way. Only you can choose what you're going to do. I can tell you how good it is over here. I can tell you there's nothing like the presence of the living God. I can tell you the water is just fine. I can tell you there's about to be a great move of God, and I'm going to be in it, and you can come with me if you want. But you can't to bring all your stuff. You're going to have to leave it on the other side. But I can't make you come. And, and me beating on you won't change a thing. But I can try to make you hungry. I can try to make you thirsty. I can try to show you how good it is to serve God. And, you'll, and some people say, well, preacher, you've been going through the mill for a while. Yeah, but notice I've been going through it. Notice my attitude isn't sour. Notice that I'm not all down and out. And I'm not going, oh, woe is me. God is against me. No, God is for me. And there's no weapon formed against me that shall prosper. And I'm going to be more than an overcomer through Christ Jesus. And I'm going to experience the presence of God in a new way. I want to go so deep in God that I may not come back. I want to experience the third heaven. I want my shadow to heal people, not for my glory, so that the people can experience the goodness of God that I've experienced on on this earth Amen. it's what I want it's what I desire I want more of God God I don't want it to be a song I sing when I sing show me your glory for so long the church got showed up though got, got caught up and just uh, show me your glory because I want to feel better today but they didn't want to live it out I want him to show me his glory so I can take it to the highways and byways and I can compel people to come. I want to show up strong in signs and wonders because I've been spending so much time with the living God that something inside me sparks something inside them. And they say, I don't know what you got, preacher, but I want it. 
And I have it happen all the time. And I'm here to tell you, he's no respecter of persons. And that's what he's looking for from us, church. People that'll say yes. That'll go ahead and take an inventory and say, listen, I got some, I got some pruning to do on my fruit today. Because <laughs> I need to cut some things out so some other things can start growing. Oh, glory. Among those who belong to Christ, everything connected with getting our own way and mindlessly responding to what everyone else calls necessities is killed off for good. It's crucified. Since this is the kind of life we have chosen, the life of the Spirit, let us make sure we do not hold it as an idea in our heads or a sentiment in our hearts that work out its implications in every detail of our lives. That means we will not compare ourselves with each other as if one is better and another worse. We have far more interesting things to do with our lives. Each of us is an original. Each of you are a masterpiece that God has created. You just have to walk it out. You may say, some may still be asking, why do I want to do all this? I just want to drop this one little nugget in here this morning. Psalm 16, verse 11. It says, Thou will show me the path of life. How many want to be in the path of life? How many figured out that's the way to be? Amen? So how many, how many believe that God will show it to us? He'll show us how the Bible says the steps of, if you need some scripture, the Bible says the steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord. He said, in thy presence is fullness of joy. He said, how do you know you're in his presence? Well, are you full of joy? Woo! Some of you, that's just kind of sinking in. How do you know you're in his presence? Are you full of joy? I didn't say are you not going through things. Are you full of joy? Are you happy, happy, happy? Is your joy meter on, on full? Can you just can't take it no more? You want to cut up and get up and dance a jig because Jesus is just so good. You go, woo! <laughs> just how full are you? And there are pleasures woo, forevermore at the right hand of the Father. See, he didn't say there wasn't no pleasures, but everything you have need of. Who was who did we say was sitting at the right hand of the Father? Jesus. That means every pleasure in your life <laughs> that you have need of is complete in Jesus, sitting at the right hand of the Father. And when you start making Him your goal, woo, and letting Him be Lord of your life, every one of those things that seem so important, He starts taking care of. And all of a sudden, the joy train starts flowing. And you're like, woo, this is good. This is better than good. It's great. <laughs> hey, listen, it's not just a sermon. These aren't just things I'm, I'm telling you. Listen, I go through things. I don't always stay on top of the joy tank, but I have learned how to get it back in my life. I have learned how to maintain it. I have learned what things to look for. I have learned how to open and close doors. And if you'll listen to this old preacher this morning, you can shift some things in your life. And it'll be a shifting that'll go on. There is no pleasure on this side. But here's the thing. How many saw some revelations? And when I first talked about pleasures, most of you thought about sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Come on. But how many got how many got illuminated to some things? Come on, we went in deep, did we not? None of that is worth the presence of God, is it? All right, Holy Spirit, what do you mean? Oh, shut tight. I love all of this. Go ahead and play so Sister Becky. If you're ready this morning to lay down...